Okay, we're going to let GTE forms take us even one step further. At GT, we believe in making business processes maximally efficient. As cool as our quick entry form is, it is not yet optimally efficient. For example, the action reasoned fields have to be selected from a long list, and that's a place where a department user could make a mistake. They could pick the wrong action reason combination, and it would require a lot of training to get them to pick the right ones. Also, the review process isn't as good as it could be. We're letting the evaluator look at the fields that were entered, but they don't really have any way to see what changed from the previous state of the, of the job record. So the review process could be better. Also, there's probably additional business process complexity that we could streamline by adding conditional branching in the way that the, the information is entered. And there could also be complexity actually in the way that the routing needs to happen. You may have different people that you want to review different types of entries for different types of employees. So let's skip to the end of the process of adding new functionality to this humble quick entry form and see what the maximally efficient state of this quick entry form might be after we've added as much functionality as we can think of using GTE forms. So to do that we're going to use the demonstration version of our job change e form. We'll log in as the initiator again and we'll go ahead and uh, go to an EPATH homepage. The EPATH homepage allows us to manage all sorts of, of transactions. We're going to use the, uh, as I said, the job change form, and we're going to use our same test case here. Now, in the business rules that we're demonstrating here, only part-time, well, only full-time people actually have position numbers. But we can actually use GTE forms to narrow down the valid values to show the appropriate list of valid values based on the type of employee we're dealing with. So a full-time faculty person would actually have a, a different list of valid position numbers. So we can add additional edits to make sure that the values selected are appropriate given the, the uh, given the existing employee. Now, we also, in our current business logic, require that only full-time people positions, part-time people, don't need positions. That changes the kind of information that we need to gather for these two different types of individuals. We don't want a situation where the end user has to know that they have to leave certain fields blank based on a certain type of, uh, of transaction. We want to only show them the fields that they really need to fill out in order to enter the transaction. So for a position person, if we come to the next page, you'll see we're seeing step one of five. Now that we know it's positioned, we're only on step two of four because we've decided we don't need to know anything about their job code or any of that. That's all stored on the position on position information. So we come right to a compensation page and here we've split off the, the annual compensation and the distribution grid to a separate compensation page. That allows us to conditionally choose whether we need to see additional information in between or not. Also in our made up business rules here only position and for only position people use earnings distribution. So if I come back to the previous page and I choose an employee group that is not full-time, first position goes away, and now we're going to see a different page. This is the information that we now need to know since we don't have a position attached to this request anymore. Now we need to know their job title and we need to be able to change the standard hours. And we're again on step two, but now it's step two of five. 
Our job code list is narrowed down to only valid values for our department and for our type of employee. And now we get to a compensation page that is appropriate for a part-time person that doesn't have the earnings distribution. So we've demonstrated that we can branch in the approval process or rather branch in the page flow process. So we can set up based on different business process complexities, we can set up branches that take us to pages that will allow us to enter information, only the information that we need. Obviously, we can do that because of the uh, page flow control that GTE Forms gives us. So these are different branches in that page flow that are set up using managed GTE Forms. So when we come to the next page, you'll see also we never had to ask for action and action reason this time. We added a calculation engine to determine based on the fields that were changed what the actions and action reasons are. So here we've determined that there are actually three actions and action reasons that came from this one transaction. All three of them will be entered into job data based on our current, uh, based on our current business process requirements. We've added a form message and when we submit this form we're actually also going to take a conditional branch in the workflow. The approval process is now appropriate for, although this looks just like the approval process that we set up before, it has the, except for the addition of the department approver, a branch was still taken even if you don't see it. If it had been full time, there would be an, an additional compensation office branch at this point. But at this point it's been sent to the department approver and that's whose desk it's on. If we go and log in as that department approver, we'll see some more functionality that's been added to make this business process optimally efficient. They have an entry on their work list. They'll also have the email, but we'll go ahead and work it from their work list this time. There's Kent Case's job change. And here you can see, first off, we've got the action and action reasons, but we're also showing a side-by-side -side view of the newly requested job information and the current job information with changes highlighted so that it's easy for the evaluator to see exactly what they need to see to see if this is an appropriate transaction. This is much more efficient than just showing them the, uh, the new data. So we'll go ahead and approve this and that will pass it on to the next approver in the business process. Again, when it's completely approved, it'll be going into the system just like our quick entry form did. But this way, we can get an optimally efficient business process by using the features of GTE forms to manipulate the business process and manage it based on the unique needs of the business process.